Ever wondered how to rapidly decrease your creatinine levels and enhance kidney health? Today, I'm uncovering some surprising truths about common treatments and sharing powerful natural alternatives that could change the game for your kidneys. From the myths we've all heard to new strategies rarely discussed, I'm breaking it all down. Stay tuned to find out if the advice you've been following is actually helping, or if there's a better way to care for your kidneys. And you need just this to get rid of extra creatinine. For the sake of this hypothetical scenario, let's say you are a patient with elevated creatinine levels, and you have made four appointments with different nephrologists and kidney physicians with the sole goal of asking them the same question. How can I quickly lower my creatinine level, which is the primary sign of kidney function? Is it correct that the first doctor will likely just tell you that there is no way to achieve this? Since diuretics help you eliminate excess fluid and toxins, that's what the second doctor would simply prescribe for you. You're likely to hear from another doctor that cutting out carbohydrates and sugar is the first step in treating water retention. The fourth physician will inform you that salt is a major issue and where to begin. Who is correct, though? Which strategy works best? All right, folks. Those of you who already know me are presumably aware that I practice natural medicine as a doctor and am a naturopath. I have also spent a significant amount of time helping people with kidney illness. First of all, welcome to D-Kidney if you're new here. If improving kidney health is your aim, please think about subscribing. Today, our focus is on figuring out the quickest, most natural way to reduce creatinine. In addition, I'll go over some of the most popular tips given to kidney patients by nephrologists and doctors, and we'll evaluate if they make sense or not. Is the first physician correct in stating that there is no way to enhance renal function? No, disregard the response from the first fictitious physician to our query. I have witnessed kidney patients get better in every stage of chronic kidney disease. CKD, including stage 5, and scientific research supports this. So, the quickest approach to reduce creatinine is using diuretics? Guys, doctors adore their diuretics, no doubt about it, but I believe patients with kidney disease should know more about them. Allow me to clarify. Diuretics, commonly referred to as water pills, are medications that directly assist the kidneys in eliminating excess water and toxins. While this sounds wonderful, diuretics have serious adverse effects that, if you are not aware of them, can be extremely harmful to your kidneys. So let's look at ways to prevent that. You should be aware that the prescription diuretics on my list, which include some name brands, do not immediately lower creatinine if you are taking any of them. The most often used diuretics are loop diuretics, such bumetanide or Lasix, and furosemide or Bumex. Due to their ability to eliminate significant volumes of fluid, salt, toxins, and potassium, these are recommended to renal sufferers. Certain individuals may also be administered potassium-sparing diuretics and thiocytes, which remove less potassium from the body. Naturally, your nephrologist should also choose the best mixture for you, but this is not always a simple task. As I mentioned earlier, there is a significant risk to the kidneys from these medications. Without a question, prescription diuretics can aid in kidney protection. The primary benefit is that cutting less on salt and sodium can lower blood pressure. However, because they might harm kidneys, they may also raise creatinine levels in certain situations. You run the risk of dehydrating yourself, which is particularly dangerous if you have kidney illness, if your dosage is too high, or if you consume too little water. Prescription diuretics in this instance may even result in acute kidney damage. So proceed with extreme caution, familiarize yourself with the medications you take, and, wherever possible, drink enough of water. Now, this doesn't imply that you ought to stop taking these medications, does it? Always follow your doctor's advice, but educate yourself as well. In keeping with this, let's examine some of the top natural substitutes for prescription diuretics. Exists a natural substitute that is effective? Yes, there are several natural substitutes that can lower creatinine and aid in your kidney's removal of extra water. This is a suggestion for reducing creatinine that can only be provided by a naturopath. Equisitum arvense, or horsetail, is what this is. 
This plant's ability to dramatically lower creatinine levels, something that traditional treatments are unable to accomplish, is what makes it so astonishing. In patients with renal illness, consuming magnesium and vitamin B6 together also helps reduce edema and the level of creatinine. Increased urine production is linked to vitamin B6, especially when paired with magnesium. This is exactly what we want to fight swelling. And if you have renal disease, this combination will also considerably help with creatinine levels. One of the best nutrients you can get to protect your kidneys is magnesium in particular. Okay, so there are still two quick and natural ways to reduce creatinine levels. Look, by the way, you may now support my work here on Kini thanks to a new feature I just created. You can see a small join button directly beneath my videos. What it accomplishes is that it gives your comments first priority for a response from me, as I always attempt to respond to as many comments as I can but I am never able to do so. For less than the cost of a cup of coffee, you can help me generate more of the material you enjoy by becoming a member of the channel. Additionally, I would want to express my gratitude to Melanie, RR, Alex, and Joseph, our first four members. I sincerely appreciate your support, so thank you very much. All right, everybody, let's return to the original query. What is the best and quickest method for eliminating extra creatinine and toxins if you have renal disease, and your objective is to improve your GFR and creatinine levels. Thus, cutting out carbohydrates and sugars from the diet is one way to address this question. Thus, cutting out high-carbohydrate foods from a diet, such as spaghetti, bread, pizza, breakfast cereals, and anything sweet, will result in an abrupt decrease in the amount of fluid that the body retains. Can creatinine levels actually be lowered using this strategy? It could be beneficial for certain patients, though, as excessive consumption of carbohydrates and sugars can lead to fluid retention in certain individuals, which can subsequently result in renal issues. Although those who have diabetes are more susceptible to this problem, anyone can experience it. Allow me to clarify. Have you ever observed that when you start a diet, you lose weight quickly? perhaps 5 or 10 pounds in a matter of days? Have you ever experienced that? Although it's quite typical, losing weight quickly doesn't really result in a decrease in body mass. Glycogen, a type of glucose stored in the muscles and liver, is what you lose when you begin a diet. All right, the body requires this glycogen in order to function. Nevertheless, the kidneys are unable to eliminate the 3 grams of water that are stored with every gram of glycogen. As a result, the kidneys will be less able to eliminate poisons like creatinine. As I mentioned before, that might add up to a significant amount of extra fluid being held in the body, which will raise your blood pressure as well. At this point, cutting back on carbohydrates might seem like a sensible way to get rid of all of this extra water, right? Is there a better approach or will that work? Of course, this means that you can eliminate a large amount of excess water that contributes to swelling and fluid tension if you make your body consume the glycogen it stores. Furthermore, as previously mentioned, eating fewer carbohydrates will drive the body to consume the glycogen that is stored in your body. At this point, some people may be tempted to consider a low-carb diet and eliminate all fruits and vegetables from their diet. But you shouldn't do that because, while it is true that cutting out all carbohydrates from your diet reduces water retention, it won't lower your creatinine levels. Well, not really, because, you know, in order to save your kidneys if you have kidney disease, your diet must have at least 60 to 70% carbohydrates. It has been repeatedly noted that renal patients' kidney function declines and their creatinine rises as soon as they quit consuming fruits and vegetables. While fruits and vegetables do include some carbohydrates, keep in mind that they are also very high in vitamins, fiber, antioxidants, and other nutrients that your kidneys require. In addition, they have an alkalizing effect. Then, how can we lower the amount of glycogen stored without drastically lowering our consumption of carbohydrates? All right. Let's start with low GI carbohydrates. This is crucial, particularly for those who have diabetes. Therefore, 
Instead of eliminating all carbohydrates, focus on eliminating those that will raise your blood sugar levels. These include things like bread, pasta, and sugar-containing beverages, as well as morning cereals, cookies, and the like. This is because your body will begin to replenish glycogen right after a glucose spike. However, eating the correct proportion of fruits and vegetables will help you obtain the necessary nutrients without holding on to too much glycogen. Because they are high in fiber, a lot of plant-based foods will actually reduce your risk of experiencing a glucose surge. Certain foods, like coconut, avocado, almonds, and seeds, also provide beneficial fats that can lower the chance of a glucose increase. Frequent exercise is another strategy to lower water retention. Do you still recall how the body uses glycogen? Vitality. The body uses glycogen as its primary fuel. Therefore, exercising will cause the body to use up more of its stored fuel, which will also cause it to retain less water. Keeping a healthy body weight is the third strategy for reducing water weight. This holds great significance if you have diabetes. Your insulin resistance will worsen if you're overweight. More insulin causes the body to store more glycogen and hold on to more water. That is to say, you do not have to completely cut off carbohydrates if your aim is to decrease water retention. Avoiding just high glycemic index carbohydrates, which are found in junk food and highly processed grains, is a healthier approach. Focus on increasing your physical activity while making every effort to keep your weight within a healthy range. If lowering your creatinine level in addition to edema and water retention is your goal, this approach will be quite successful. All right, guys, so we've covered two effective methods for lowering your creatinine naturally and reducing fluid retention. However, as I mentioned earlier, if you ask multiple doctors how to lower your creatinine, you'll likely get different answers. Some doctors will, of course, tell you that sodium is your worst enemy if you also want to lower your creatinine levels and reduce water retention. Is that accurate, though? Let me explain this very clearly, though. Okay. I don't see anything wrong with this response. Any doctor will advise you to watch how much sodium you eat, and they are correct. However, if you ask me, I'll go one step farther. I will inform you of a hidden risk that the majority of kidney patients are unaware of, concealed salt. Allow me to clarify. Large food businesses have discovered that adding high amounts of sugar and sodium to their products causes people to eat more of them. This is a really smart marketing tactic but it has a drawback. The majority of items on grocery store shelves are harmful to your kidneys. For this reason, it is insufficient to simply stay away from the salt shaker. By the way, guys, it's been discovered that kidney impairment occurs even in the general public due to the excessive sodium intake that these marketing whizzes urge us to drink on a daily basis. The kidneys are directly harmed by sodium. Handling elevated salt levels makes the kidneys work harder which will shorten their lifespan independently of high blood pressure. Therefore, never assume that you don't need to limit your intake of salt just because your blood pressure and kidneys are in good condition. Thus, while salt enhances flavor, it is also highly detrimental to your kidneys. This may not seem like a positive thing until you discover that eliminating excess sodium also directly protects the kidneys. In actuality, it is best to consume less sodium. Cutting back on salt can not only help with swelling and high blood pressure, but it will also reduce your amount of protein urea. Let's examine how to accomplish this now. So, what exactly is hidden sodium, and how can we stay away from it? Guys, I'm currently on a diet. I track my macros using an app, but I also read a lot of product labels, and I'm still amazed at how much sodium food companies manage to get into even the healthiest foods. You see, processed foods account for around 80% of the salt we consume daily rather than salt from a shaker. These are a few of the dishes that most surprised me. Vegetable juice. They say it's an easy way to get your veggies by drinking it. In actuality, you'll be consuming a lot of sodium-containing beverages. Vegetable juice can contain 400, 600 milligrams of salt in an 8 ounces, 240 milliliters serving which is about half of the daily recommended amount. Let's also discuss salad dressings. 
salad dressing had an average of more than 300 milligrams of sodium per two tablespoons, or 28G, serving according to an assessment of popular brand name goods available in U.S. supermarkets. Yes, salad dressing is the simplest way to spoil a salad. Now, with the bread, processed cheese, cured meats, and sauces, sandwiches are definitely among the worst offenders. Easily, more than 1,500 milligrams of sodium can be found in one sandwich. For someone with kidney issues, consuming even one of these will be a terrible idea. In other words, simply avoiding the salt shaker is insufficient. Additionally, you should closely read the labels on the food you are consuming twice. Avoid being duped by marketing departments. Now, folks, every time I talk about sodium in my videos, I get comments from people who are concerned about taking sodium bicarbonate as a supplement, but they don't realize that it actually contains sodium. Also, do they know of a better option? In fact, I've... I have created a video in response to these inquiries. In case you missed it, it's located both here and in the description below. I'll end it here for today. I appreciate you seeing. Blessings to all of you. Goodbye.